Hi, this is Massimiliano Papaleo from MP Studio. Welcome to this new workshop on MDF demo. Today we will see a demo uh, about uh, how to develop a complete uh, MES application. You can download this demo from www.mpstudio.com. This demo is composed by two projects. One is uh, the business entities, uh, all uh, the uh, solution based on MDF uh, as uh, uh, one project named uh, mdf.businessentities, where you can define your entities uh, of uh, your custom entities like equipment, material, order, personnel, and project entities. In this demo, I added uh, other classes uh, like uh, a demo element and uh, some resource uh, to have uh, some configuration in this demo. Uh, the other project is a web portal that was uh, developed just for this demo. Uh, and uh, I can show you uh, how to use and configure this. I uh, start to configure this portal um, writing that the demo is not initialized and start the demo. Now, the first thing that uh, this demo uh, allow uh, to do is uh, to configure all the environment and uh, is something like uh, uh, the configuration that you have to do uh, to create a new MES, uh, MES application. So uh, the first thing that you have to do uh, to make, uh, to develop an MES is to create the database. So um, here I write my uh, database password and uh, um, you can do this from the console, uh, the MDF console that you have uh, uh, when you install the MDF uh, library. Now I will show you the database is uh, MDF demo. Uh, with all the uh, the tables uh, uh, ISA 95, uh, uh, some uh, programmability uh, and function and so on. After this, uh, I will add some programmability uh, that I need in this demo, like uh, get first process segment will be uh, date, uh, add the process segment uh, time span and so on. Uh, so I can uh, use uh, the database uh, uh, just for my purpose. After this, I have to configure the equipment classes and material classes. Uh, usually you have to do this uh, through the MDF portal, but uh, in this demo, uh, all the application add the equipment classes with no properties, uh, just because I don't need the properties in this demo, and the material classes uh, like raw material, semi-finished, A and B material, and uh, finished material. Now I import the configuration. And after this, uh, I have uh, to um, generate custom tables. To do this, you can do uh, through the custom class generator that is the add-in on the Visual Studio.net, or you can uh, uh, launch the generate a custom table from the MDF console. So uh, I defined uh, several equipment, so the uh, custom class generator will create for me uh, tables like MDF enterprises, uh, uh, MDF productions, uh, and so on, because I defined the MDF MDF enterprises and uh, MDF work cells uh, like this, and uh, three tables for each uh, um, custom material that I defined. So uh, lots, uh, material definition, and sub uh, sublots. I create the tables, and uh, I can take a look on the database to see what happened. And, uh, uh, about the tables, uh, I just have uh, several tables uh, that was uh, uh, created uh, from the custom class generator. After this, uh, I will uh, add to this demo several equipments, several materials, uh, semi-finished materials, uh, uh, production rule uh, for the finished materials, uh, process segment, uh, and uh, production capabilities uh, and production schedules. 
Now I will show you in detail how this demo work. Uh, launching this uh, this command will take uh, up to 30 seconds. So just a moment. Okay. So uh, after this, uh, I can go through the model page and uh, understand how this demo work. The first thing is the equipment classes and uh, equipments that uh, I have in this demo. So about the classes, uh, I have MDF Enterprise, MDF Site, MDF Production, MDF Work Cell. So I have uh, as equipment uh, and a hierarchical structure like uh, an enterprise, a site, a production. Inside this there are three work cells. We have a raw material, semi-finished material A and B, and finished material. In this demo we have uh, 100 raw materials, uh, uh, 10 uh, semi-finished material A, and uh, 10 semi-finished material B, and 10 uh, semi-finished material. After this, we have to configure the process segment that we have inside our process. So, uh, like in ISA 95, we have the process segment and we can uh, define uh, for each pro pro process segment uh, the equipment segment specification, material segment specification, and personal segment specification. Uh, in this example, uh, uh, we added uh, a phase one, phase two, and phase three uh, as uh, process segments. Uh, with the duration of 7 minutes and uh, 35 seconds for phase 1, 4 minutes for phase 2, and 3 minutes for phase 3. Uh, the uh, phases are joined between them uh, with the dependency, and the phase 3 can start only after phase 1 and phase 2. About the production rule, uh, as defined in ISA 95, we have uh, a join with the material definition, in this case only with finished material, and for each production rule we can define for each segment the specification that we need. In example, we need in, uh, for the production rule number one, in the phase one we need the work cell one, and we need the uh, material uh, zero, material one, and material two, and we will produce uh, a uh, semi-finished A. Uh, in phase two, other raw materials, and we produce other semi-finished. And in phase three, we use uh, the semi-finished A and B, and uh, we will uh, consume uh, other raw materials and produce uh, a finished material.